Welcome to The Fix. Sit down with copywriting experts Nick O'Connor and Glenn Fisher as they review, discuss and improve real world copy sent in by you. This is The Fix. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Fix. I'm going to tell you a quick story before I introduce our guest today. Uh, in 2011, uh, which was about 18 months after I started working as a copywriter, I was in the Agora offices uh, in London. It was a building called Sea Containers House, which is a hotel now. And uh, a group of people I'd never met walked into the office. And the head of marketing at the time, whose name was Ryan, came over and sort of crouched down by my desk and pointed at somebody and said, this guy knows how to market on Facebook. That's why he's here. The man he was pointing at is our guest today. Uh, it's uh, Grant Perry, who at the time was working, I think you were at International Living, and then, yeah. which is one of the Agora uh, divisions. Grant then, Grant then went on to work with lots and lots of divisions uh, within the Agora world and now works in the same industry, but outside of the Agora world. So I kind of think it's cool that we're going to get stuck into a Facebook uh, advert because that was how you were introduced to me, Grant. So uh, it's great to have you here with, and thanks for coming on. Yeah, great to be here. Yeah, that was a long time ago, but uh, yeah, the world has changed a bit and stayed the same at the same time. So yeah, it'd be interesting to hear your all your thoughts as well. Do you know what? I've always, uh, so I'm going to put my cards on the table. I am useless as a copywriter when it comes to sure uh, form advertisers, so Google ads, Facebook ads, things like that. I understand the principle and I do write them. However, I never feel confident and I never feel like I know what I'm doing. Um, and so people who work in that world um, and understand and are sort of on the front line of marketing on social media and other platforms like that, hold a weird sort of hold over me um, and always have and perhaps always will. So so I'm actually, I'm here to learn uh, from you when it when it comes to this piece of copy, right? because I don't even really know how to assess a piece of um, Facebook copy, but shall we um, shall we read one aloud? We've got a submission from a fix reader, and we'll use that as a way of getting into writing Facebook ads. Hey, Glenn, shall I say hey, something? Hey, yeah, hey, let's do that. I'll share my uh, Grant Perry story in the second half of the show, <laughs> which is, which is a much sexier um, story than yours. Uh, but quite in, in the similar time frame. Um, <laughs> you should be able to see uh, on the screen, um, but I will read it out for those li people listening. Uh, this was a, an ad, a Facebook ad, um, sent in to us by a follower of The Fix. Uh, it was originally, well, you can see that uh, if you're looking on screen, but if not, it's written in Croatian uh, originally, but we will translate it. I will read the translation. Uh, so to describe it, you've got um, the, the brand at the top, uh, as you would on a Facebook ad, and then you've got some copy which says, avoid the luxury packaging and high prices. Pay only for what you want, the scent. Pick a fragrance and prepare, prepare for compliments. And then there's an image of a woman holding a perfume bottle to her face. Uh, and on that image is the copy says, same scents, better prices, find your fragrance and then you've got a three plus one gratis which i assume is free and a call to action uh button which says kupi otma i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but i imagine that says click here or something similar to that so that is your uh facebook advert uh what now what's interesting here and i think this is where we'll get with gran is is good we have two sides to Facebook advertising as far as I'm concerned. We've got that copy, which I think we can look at. And Nick, I know you will look at that from copy point of view, but also what I'd like to dig in with, with Grant, I write stuff like this quite often, is there are different rules to writing copy for Facebook. People will require different things for this space ad and stuff. So there's, there's, there's going to be natural limitations there to what you can do. Um, but Nick, first, I'll give you the first benefit of the doubt. What do you, what's your initial thing? So I'm going to try and look at it just from a pure copy point of view before we get into the, because I feel like we should square that off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So 
obviously this has been translated, so I'm going to ignore the, some of the sort of nitty gritty of the language. Like, what is the proposition here? Um, that's that's clear, as in this is a way of getting luxury, um, luxury high end perfume at lower prices. The other, the, what I would say about that is, I, I actually feel like it needs a little bit. It needs a little hook of some sort, or some sort of unique mechanism, or something that makes it slightly less direct. Like, um, even if it was written in a way that was like, Psst, "Have you heard the way some people are getting, uh, uh, you know, designer luxury perfumes for you know, uh." 80 percent less of the price it's to make it feel a bit secret or a bit underground or a bit whatever because it's flipping it's flipping a, a a market on its head it's kind of like there's a new way around it almost needs that sense of um unique mechanism i think on a copy level because the benefit is very clear but when you go so directly at something it becomes like this is cheaper than the competitor you know <laughs> get thing you know for less money is fine but it's like if you're going to do that you may as well go really direct and say how to get hundred dollar perfumes for five dollars you know it's like how to buy a house for 10 cents or whatever you may as well go really direct like that if you're not going to do it like 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 that and state it like ridiculously boldly then i think i'd want a bit of secret or a bit of unique proposition do you know what i mean so it's kind of amping the copy up a little bit the benefit is clear the um yeah, the benefit that the benefit is absolutely clear. It almost needs a bit of um, I want to say artifice, but that's not the right word, is it? A little bit of. Do you think oh. what, you say, what you're really looking for is just a little bit more of that? Um, I think it, it's it's we've gone from features. The feature is the fact that you can get benefits. Uh, sorry, you can get uh, high brand uh, perfumes for for less. That's like the feature of it. The benefit. Sorry, you can get cheap perfume. That's the feature um bot bold without being bold the benefit is that that will save you money and you can get more expensive perfumes the sense of that for less but the emotional benefit like the where it's actually going to hit you and connect with you on a not necessarily a logical basis because up until that point we're in we're in the logical realm that emotional thing where it's like oh yeah god i want to i want to that prepare for compliments like start hinting towards that but something more along that line to make it a bit more a uh, bit more grabbing rather than just too logical this just just needs a little pepper of emotion on there i think possibly although i d i would say hmm, we'll, we'll bring grant in and, and he can decide who's right in a second but when it's perfume it's like selling an ipod you know do you need to sell the benefits of the ipod or would you say how to get an i an ipod why am i saying an ipod it's like I'm stuck in 2002. <laughs> uh, you know, how to get an iPod for $50. You know, you wouldn't necessarily, there's a secret way of, so the secret and the and the, the, the underlying emotional heck might actually be the idea of getting a ridiculously good deal. So it could become emotional at a certain point. We don't necessarily have to sell perfect because there's a whole industry that does that for us. So I, I think you could do it either way. So let's bring Grant in, ask him who's right, but also I'm interested, Grant, when you get a piece of copy from a copywriter, so you're not a copywriter, but you work closely with lots of copywriters and they would look to you for guidance, I'm expecting. What's your process when you're reviewing a piece of copy? Just talk me through what you're looking for. Yeah, so these days I actually do do probably most of the copy, or I do really myself, but I, I'm effectively stealing from the copywriter. So... I think it's worth just mentioning that from the beginning, like it's see, you know, we're looking at this in isolation as the ad, but really the most important work the copywriter has done is what happens after the ad. What are they clicking through to? What's the promotion that they're seeing there? That's, that's really what's going to do all the heavy lifting and probably cover all the points you guys are talking about. So really this ad is only doing one thing. All it's doing is it's trying to be thumb stopping. Most people are on their mobile device. It's just trying to get their attention to stop them from scrolling past it and to look at it and then to click on it. And so I think you can overthink all of the, the elements of the ad copy at this level. And importantly, this is for, because the things that you guys are saying, firstly, are exactly the things I would have probably said a few years ago too, when I worked much more in the Agora space, the info sort of publishing world. Now I'm actually in e-commerce. You know, I work for 
a, a company that's that's selling t-shirts mostly and you know it's it's there's not as much need to kind of you know firstly it's low price point and i suspect this is probably relatively low price point too that most people are actually more interested in the offer and something like this than they are in the emotion and the hook of it of the of the copy you know and saying that you know maybe that the, the hook here is just it's cheaper, but no one, no one will know that. You know, basically, you're getting it for cheap, but no one's gonna, else is going to know the difference. The emotional hook is, no one else is going to swim. They smell it; they, they think it's a brand perfume, but you, you're getting it for half the price. So there's almost like a, a secret kind of um, element to that, or there's sort of something I'm getting over, you know, everyone else. No one else will know. That's probably the hook. But yeah, I think the important part here is, for a copywriter, and I think it goes back to your point right at the start. You said, you know, I'm you're maybe kind of intimidated or you don't really know how this whole, you know, marketing digital ad side of it works. So I would say to you, and I would say to all of any copywriters who, who pretty much all of your audience really listening to this is you shouldn't feel that way. Certainly not anymore. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. It's, it's, um, you know, the ad platforms and Facebook in particular, it's so easy now. It's a, it's actually the mechanics of it are so simple. There's really not much secret source anymore. And in fact, it puts more of the weight on the copywriter because building lists, which is, you know, list offer and copy, they're the, the critical parts here. Facebook or Google, that used to be quite difficult to the mechanics of building that list and getting that audience. And so that's now gone. That's effectively so easy. Anybody can do that. So it becomes more important than ever that the copy is what sets you apart. You know, you don't have to figure out what audiences to, to do. Facebook does that all for you. Google does that all for you. So now all you need to do is get their attention and get them through to a good promotion. You know, and that's where the copy becomes the secret source. So I think from the positive side of it as a copywriter, suddenly there's more power to you. And I think it also makes you, if I was a copywriter now, I'd be saying, man, I want to understand how these ad platforms work because it gives you an extra edge to say to a client, I can give you you know, promotion, I can also give you all the ad copy that uh, that a marketer might need. You know, that suddenly makes you incredibly valuable. So, um, so yeah, for something like this type of ad, especially it's e-commerce, I think you can overthink the, the ad copy and really it's always working backwards. That's what I've always done. I've always, you know, looked at the promotion or the offer, final order form page, and that usually is provides the best copy that you're going to find for, the, for an ad on Facebook. So instead of sort of trying to overcomplicate it, pick the bones of the of the of the copy, usually in the headline or on the on the actual offer page, and that is going to give you more than likely the copy points you'll need to kind of to get people hooked in from a from a, an ad on Facebook or Google. So, what do you you talked about sort of uh, thumb thumb stop it? I guess. I mean, I I was I don't even have a Facebook account. Um, so I, the, the, which I know is terrible because I might well be asked to rise them for it, but I just cannot abide yeah. by it. Um, so what do you, what do you think stands out first? You know, is it the image? Are we put yeah. in, cause I would probably start there, put some big copy on that image cause it's going to look bigger or is it the body copy? Like where do you, where do you think the eye is drawn to first? Yeah. Typically it's sort of drawn to the, to the image and then to the top and then to the bottom. So there's a, bit, a fair bit of psychology around it, but absolutely, that was the point I was going to make. Obviously, you know, you, you guys are copywriters, but I think this day and age, more than ever, you know, you have to be really sort of uh, tuned in that an image or a video, you, and oftentimes video is huge as well, whether that's a slideshow style video, of the old talking program of ESL style, or whether it's an actual video, that's hugely important now. Now, you don't necessarily have to create the videos. They can be done dynamically by the ad platforms themselves, but whether it's video or just a still image, it's really, really important. That is probably, you know, the, the most critical part of it. So try to figure out what those images are to get the attention are, are pretty important, but you also don't really need to. You can, you can just give those images to Facebook and it will dynamically choose the, the best images that work best. So, you know, I think a lot of the, the guesswork is taken out because of the ad platforms that are so dynamic now that you can just feed it lots of different creative elements, headlines, copy images and it will automatically create different versions of those ads and find a winner pretty quickly and it's that's artificial intelligence at work right there and it's better than it's ever been you know a lot of people are probably were rightly dubious of that a few years ago but now really anything we do is getting in the way of that 
you know, we, we do need to give it something. So you do need a copywriter needs to come up with some good headlines and bullet points, but this is where you can just put in multiple variations and it will, you know, fit, figure it out for you. So we might, sorry, go on, go on, go on, go on. I was just going to say, so, because I, my gut feeling on this and what my experience has been writing copy for this stuff and for, for the marketer who might be working for a big brand like that is it is a bit volume based in the sense that as a copywriter is what I think, and I'd be interested to hear if it's the, your experience grant is what the really, what people are probably looking for. My gut feeling is, is that it's the volume of ideas. So as you say, it's like you put in all of that stuff. So rather than worrying over thinking like the, the structure of those three sentences or the combination of that image versus another image, it's just, it's almost like me and Nick talk quite a lot on this show about like, if you're going to write headlines for a typical old kind of style, Agora style promo, you'd write 50 different headlines with 50 different ideas and then, um, select and amplify from those. But here at this stage, it's almost like actually just write 50 different ideas and then we'll test them all and we'll figure out which ones the what, like let, let the algorithms do the work. So it's actually, it comes back to a fundamental thing we say, always say that more than copywriters, we are ideas people. It is this stage where it's like a marketer just needs as many ideas and go, that could work. That might work. Try that. Like this is, so it's that it's more of a, you've got more permission to be inventive and, uh, and kind of get out there a bit and go, right, okay, what what if it just said bananas? And you go, well, that doesn't have anything to do with perfume. And you go, yeah, but let's try it. And the, it will tell us if that's coming back kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think there's an element of relevancy. You do want it to be relevant as possible, but yeah, there is a bit of scope there. And it can be a great way to find an idea that suddenly get, it gets people's attention. And then maybe you, you need to rewrite the promo with, with that in mind. But yeah, there is definitely scope to to kind of be a bit more loose there, I guess. I mean, you know, the way the algorithms work too, you, you, you do want to get, it used to be in the past, you'd want to kind of be very clear and not get the wrong clicks, especially in Google when you were paying per click. Now, most of them are charging by impression and you get the high click through rate. It's not really going to cost you more. It's going to cost you less actually if you get lots of clicks because a high click through rate means the ad platforms like you because they're saying, well, this is getting people's attention. We'll give you a discount in the auction because it's, it's clearly an indicator that this is resonating. So whereas in the past, you might've tried to be more restrictive and getting the right clicks and, and therefore paying less, but getting a more relevant visitor. Now there's, there's a, there's more of a case to say, look, let's just get lots of clicks. They still need to be relevant and good clicks. Obviously you don't want just people clicking and then it's something completely out of um, left field and it's not relevant, but there is an element to that where you, yeah, you've got a bit more scope to, to do that. So. You know, ultimately it does come down to what you're selling as well. You know, certain products, especially in this, in the space, you know, we've come from the Agora type world, you know, controversial or kind of contrarian type ideas. I go, is it going to get more leverage for something like selling perfume here? This is more of an e-commerce type sort of offer. It's not really, doesn't really have the same scope for that. You know, you're not going to go in with a big controversial sort of thing that's going to get people's attention. You know, so uh, it, it does matter that the type of product you're selling, it sort of, it, it, you know, has a big influence also in terms of the compliance on the ad platforms, what you can kind of, what you can say and get away with and the types of products they want, you know, that adds in that element of, of what you can and can't say as well. So that's where it gets kind of tricky, but yeah, ultimately I think you want attention and images are going to do a great job at that copy. You don't have the same restrictions. I think you might have mentioned that at one point, um, Nick. You, you do it. Google is still much more restricted in terms of the the sheer volume. You can. It was in vogue a while ago, and it's, I still see it work quite well with Facebook, where you have these massive long posts. You know, almost like a, it's almost like a full promotion or a couple of pages of a of the lead of a promotion in the ad copy itself, and you know that can work quite well in some cases as well. Whereas in other cases, especially e-commerce very short with clear on the offer, especially if it's a low price point, can oftentimes be all you need um, to, to get them to, to click and to buy. So, yeah. So here we might, I mean, I'm just trying to think from the point of view of the person who sent this copy in, I mean, yeah. to boil this down to a few things you could try. I mean, probably start with the central proposition. So, okay, what, what would the simplest version of that be? A bottle of perfume with $100 crossed out and $5 red underneath. Yeah. You know, like, so it's it's like an advert that somebody's come in with a red pen and said, so probably start 
fair, I would say, because that is the proposition. And and I think the, the the I know we have we haven't reached necessarily a conclusion on this, but I I think there is an emotion to a to a good deal on some level. I think it's worth a go. Yeah. You could also um, try putting brand names in there. So Dior, usual price, this on this site, this price. You know what I mean? And you could try lots of different brand names because. You don't know which one. Well, they might shut you down and say we don't want that advertising. You, you might have a trouble with compliance there, but you, it, it might work. But I think you are right about the emotion. I think you're dead on there. And, and yeah, this is the beauty of it, that you could try a, a bunch of different variations of this images, whether it's yeah, going straight for the price. And again, with e-commerce, I'll go back to this. You know, it used to be this old argument, copy versus list. And, and poor old offer was sometimes forgotten about more than ever, it's copy and it's the offer. And so if the offer here is three plus one gratis, you know, what is, is that a percentage discount might come across better, you know, 50% off, they, they work like gangbusters. We we forget about these obvious sale type um, elements to to a headline or to the offer. So I think, um, you know, the emotion can work great. Definitely, I wouldn't, I'm not saying that you should take emotion out, it can still work really well, but sometimes it's just the image and the and the clear offer when it's a, a price point, you know, is like the book as a hook offers that used to work so well. It's it's the low price point. That's really what's getting their initial attention. A free book, you know, that's that's ultimately that. So three plus one, I'd play with that here for sure, and and say you know try it as 30, you know forty percent off or whatever the the price might be, and you know try some elements there to or, or have that in the in the body copy itself up the top. As well, and a few um, a few emojis work great. As much as I hate to say it, they, they do work well. You know, that's that's just what people their eyes are drawn to. So you know, test test that as well as the actual copy. We could sort of garland that with a bit of copy. So if we started with forty percent off or whatever works, yeah, you know, whatever the thing is, you know, forty dollars instead of one hundred dollars, forty percent off, whatever. You could then garland that with a hook around that's so a secret backdoor way to get forty percent off perfume. It, Try lots of variations of backdoor. You could also, when something is like, oh, compliance won't like that, as in you can't use another company's brand name here. That's all. Okay, why can't you use that? Because they wouldn't like you to. If they wouldn't like you to do it, then there's power to that statement. So you could push in that direction. Say, perfume companies hate this. Why? But like that. So there's always a little angle. You can start to see how maybe we could build up from offer. I quite like that as a. I know that it sounds like we're doing it the same way, but I, that's not the way I would actually start writing a piece of copy. But if I started from offer, I might try and figure out, let the market tell me which version of that gets the most clicks, then layer something on top of that, then layer something, and we can iterate. I hate that phrase, but we can go back to the market and say this. Does this do better? This do better? Better or worse? Better or worse? I feel, I feel like that's probably how you get there. But I think starting from the offer especially for a product up like this yeah is 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 the is the way to go about it i would say yep absolutely um i have some more questions uh so well, i think we should come back to that piece of copy in a second but we're going to look at a piece of landing page copy i want to talk about uh, uh friendly fronds and all sorts of different sort of technical stuff about uh social media uh advertising but all of that is going to be in the second part of the show is going to be for Fix Accelerator members only. So if you're a Fix Accelerator member, keep watching. That's all coming up. Um, if you are not a Fix Accelerator member, what's going on? Uh, become one. Honestly, it's it's uh, uh, it's the best way to improve your copywriting uh, connections and skills and, uh, dare I say it, earning power. Uh, there's a link directly below uh, this uh, video which will tell you more about the Fix Accelerator. Uh, aside from that, uh, I will sign off uh, today. Stick around if you're a Fixed Accelerator member, but if you're not, thank you very much and goodbye. If you enjoy The Fix and want to get access to even more good stuff, join The Fix Accelerator today. Get access to special masterclasses from Nick and me, watch expert interviews with industry legends, join live copy feedback sessions every week and get connected to our very own private copy network. Visit thefixaccelerator.com for more information.